Hi everyone, welcome to the session. I'm very glad to be here to talk about how we manage millions of clusters running at the edge. This is Di Xu from China. I am an open source advocate and participate in quite a few open source projects. Also, I am the founder of open source project ClassNet, which is exactly what I'm going to introduce today. Before getting started, I would like to briefly talk about today's agenda. First, I would briefly talk about why Kubernetes is used for edge. But most of the time, a single Kubernetes cluster cannot meet all our needs, especially for edge scenarios. Then we have to adopt Kubernetes multi cluster architecture. The difficulties and challenges of running Kubernetes will multiply as we scale. In this session, I will share our solution on multi-cluster management. Also, the benchmark will be given on managing 1 million clusters running at the edge. There are also some improvements we can do in the future. Now, let's get to the first topic, Kubernetes at the edge. Why edge computing matters so much? According to Gartner, only 10% of data today is being created and processed outside the traditional data centers. By 2025, the number is projected to increase to 75% due to the rapid, rapid expansion of IoT devices. More processing power will be enabled on embedded and mobile devices and more use cases and products for edge computing will be created over the next few years. The primary benefit of edge computing is that users get a better experience in terms of reliability, reduced latency, and potentially better privacy by keeping more of the data on the device or on the local network. The next stage of cloud computing brings computing power even closer to the users. Such as we can push our workloads that were previously running in data centers or clouds directly onto user devices. This will make deployments of software to remote edge locations as seamlessly as deploying to the cloud. With the help of Kubernetes, this is gonna to come true. There are several advantages of using Kubernetes for edge computing. Kubernetes is being ubiquitous and fundamental. As you all know, it is going under the hood similar to Linux. Kubernetes is already designed for working across data centers and dealing with issues that are similar to edge computing. It is a well-established platform for hosting microservices. It facilitates a cloud-native approach to application deployments, going from multi-region data centers to multi-edge locations is not a big problem. Also, with Kubernetes, we can benefit a lot from cloud-native community. It is a mature ecosystem. We can find many awesome cloud-native projects to leverage. And Kubernetes can manage anything, not only containers. Let's look at some of the most popular options when we want to deploy Kubernetes for edge computing. The first way is to deploy a full-fledged cluster at each edge location. That means Kubernetes control plane and work nodes are deployed on edge nodes. With this way, Kubernetes is fully aut autonomy at the edge. The second way is to only have a single Kubernetes cluster in our data center or clouds, while the work nodes are running at the edge. This helps eliminate the overheads of having a dedicated control plane at each location, but it may not be feasible if there is a significant latency, connectivity, or lack of sufficient bandwidth for cluster internal services or operations between the Kubernetes control plane and the work location to function correctly. The second way is to only have a single Kubernetes cluster in our data centers or clouds. 
while we keep our work nodes running at the edge. This would help eliminate the overhead of having a dedicated control plane at each location, but it may not be feasible. If there is a significant latency on a lack of sufficient bandwidth for cluster internal services or connectivity, operations between cumulative control plan and the worker nodes may not work correctly. When we use option 1 to run our full-fledged Kubernetes at the, at the edge, that means we need to ma manage multiple clusters running at the edge. And even when we use option 2, we still have the need to manage multiple clusters because we cannot manage all the edge nodes into one single cluster. In this session, we are focusing on option 1. There are quite a few light-wide Kubernetes distros out there for us to choose like K3S. This will help us at the wrong Kubernetes at the edge. Now let's talk about the why multi-clusters and the challenge for that. Of course, with multiple Kubernetes clusters come an increase in complexity. So why would we still want to choose multi-cluster? To be simple, we do have business needs, such as isolation. While isolation not only means for data, but for workloads, developers, teams, orgs, etc. With multi-cluster, you can replicate your applications across different data centers in different regions, increasing availability. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Multi-cluster also helps us with scalability. The load balancer will send traffic to a particular cluster based on the URL or the type of requests. And in case the cluster is getting too many hits, the cluster will be scaled out to handle the load. That helps us meet our diverse performance needs by intelligent utilization of our resources. Managing security and RBAC policies in a large single cluster environment is extremely difficult. As you all know, with multi-cluster, we can have tighter security checks per cluster basis Multi-cluster also allows us to meet regulatory and compliance needs. One example is GDPR, where the data of European customers must physically re inside the EU region. You can have one cluster for EU users inside the EU region, while for the other global customers, you can have one cluster in the global region. With a multi-cluster solution, you can easily target the specific clusters to meet different compliance needs. Multi-cloud is another strategy which can avoid getting vendors logged in. So adopting a multi-cluster architecture is another better health choice. And Kubernetes itself do has some limitations. We cannot run all the workloads in a single cluster. This is impractical. Maintaining a very large cluster is painful, especially when you want to upgrade the cluster or backup etc data. And when the number of poles and services grows in the cluster, the performance and latency of the whole cluster gets affected as well. Setup and management of multi-cluster Kubernetes are not easy. For multi-cluster, this complexity is increased. You have to set up the proper configuration of all the clusters separately. Contrary to a single cluster setup where there is only one API server, multi AP server exists in the, in the case of multi-cluster. You must set up and manage access to these API servers for all the clusters. It is extremely complex to maintain multiple clusters and have them work together as one unit, such as cluster management and application deployments. Inter-cluster communication is another area that needs to be handled in the case of multi-cluster Kubernetes. You have to manage your cluster's IP, routing rules and DNS settings very carefully. Network becomes a bigger challenge because you need to be able to handle connectivity, downtime, and deal with the syncing data between your control plane and edge locations. While the, the edge Kubernetes challenge is not about the distribution, but managing at scale. So we build the open source project ClassNet to help us better manage Kubernetes multi-clusters. The goal of ClassNet is to help manage millions of Kubernetes clusters. 
the name cluster that comes from a combination word of cluster and the internet. Just as the name says, the goals of cluster is to try to help manage their clusters as easily as visiting the internet. No matter the clusters are running on public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, or at the edge, ClassNet lets you manage or visit them as if they were running locally. This, this also helps eliminate the need to jungle different environments. Also, it can help deploy or coordinate applications to multiple clusters from a single set of APIs in the whole thing cluster. We started the project since March 2021. Now we have released the 11th versions. You can check it out with this GitHub URL. ClassNet is multiple platforms supported as well. Actually, before building this project, we had searched all over the cloud native community and trying to find a project that can meet our needs. But unfortunately, we did not find one. So I find this project, ClassNet. ClassNet consists of three components, ClassNet, ClassNet Agent, ClassNet Scheduler, and ClassNet Hub. ClassNet Agent runs at each child community cluster. It automatically rejects current cluster to a parent cluster as a child cluster, and reports hard bits of current cluster, including Kubernetes version, running platform, healthy, ready, lively status, etc. It can also help set up a WebSocket connection with ClassNet Hub in the parent cluster to provide a full duplex communication channels over the single TCP connection. This is quite useful, I think. When we want to manage an edge cluster without any public IP address, this will help better help improve the security without exposing the Kubi ABS server address publicly. While this WebSocket connection is optional, we can choose to use it or not. ClassNet Hub runs as the parent cluster. It runs as an aggregated API server that maintains multiple active WebSocket connections with child clusters. But here, we don't need to use any storage like ETCD. Since we don't need to store anything, it will approve registration requests from child clusters and create inclusive sets of resources for each child cluster such as namespaces, service accounts, and RBAC rules. It proxies all complete style APIs to target the child cluster and allows to manage all the child clusters with Kubi config. ClassNet scheduler is pretty simple. It is responsible for coordinating applications to match the clusters based on scheduling strategy. From the architecture, we can see ClassNet is designed as an add-on. You can directly deploy to your existing cluster and make it become a multi-cluster control plan. It will not affect any existing pods, workloads, services that are running out of there. It provides full-fledged cluster management to child clusters. You can visit any of them with the conventional copy cut away using a copy config on a clinical library. Also, we provide a copy cut plugin for easy use. Let's see some highlights features of ClassNet. ClassNet provides universal managing control over heterogeneous clusters. No matter where a cluster is running, AWS, Google Cloud, Edge, etc., it can manage them all. Unless the cluster is using certificate community distros, it also helps deploy and coordinate applications to multiple clusters from a single set of APIs in the hosting cluster. All resources are supported, in, including Kubernetes native objects like deployments, staff sets, config maps, secrets, etc. And CIDs are supported as well, and HAM charts as well. With various scaling strategies, you can have your applications running independently in multiple clusters or scaling them into several clusters. ClassNet supports both push and pull modes for clusters. Pull means there will be a controller on the agent running the child cluster that will help reconcile parent objects to current cluster. While push means a controller or agent running the parent cluster, it will push all the changes down to child clusters. Both of these two modes are okay. We can choose the right working mode in our edge scenarios. 
Let's do a benchmark on ClassNet to see the scale on managing edge clusters. Before that, let's talk about how to construct when mailing clusters. If we only want a couple of clusters, it is not a big case to use real clusters. But if the number goes to one million, things get changed. That's too expensive for one million real clusters. Not only the cost, hardware, and it is time consuming to set them up. Running Kubernetes in Docker is an option which is lightweight and easy to set up. But when the number goes to one million, it's still not a good choice either. So we run ClusterNet with go routines. One cluster agent represents one cluster. We just need to simulate millions of goal things. Here are the settings of our benchmark. We have four nodes with large quota of CPU, calls, and memory. This will help reduce the maintaining effort and also increase the power of ClassNet. We have one node to run a Kubernetes control plane and one node for ClassNet only. Running ClassNet hub with replicas 30. And another two nodes run for performance workers. We will stimulate millions of cluster connections. Each cluster can work with mode either push or pull. Using pull mode, it will be quite simple comparing to push mode. With push mode, we need to set up extra socket connections if no public IP addresses are exposed. So we choose push mode to see how far ClassNet can go. This is a benchmark of 1 million clusters working in push mode. We can see when the cluster number goes to 10,000. Each cluster hub only needs 500 megabytes. When the total number goes to 1 million, the memory reaches nearly 3 gigabytes to maintain 40,000 socket connections. And Kubi AP server do have lots of pressure as well, reaching nearly 120 gigabytes. From the benchmark, we can see Kubi AP server is quite exhausted. From the benchmark, we can see Kubi AP server is quite exhausted. In the benchmark, Kubi AP server is running only with one replicas. When running with multiple replicas, this will be mitigated a little bit. And a better solution will be running with a hierarchy architecture. That is, we can have nested parent clusters. Each parent cluster can be a child cluster of another parent cluster. This helps improve latencies, scalabilities, load balancing, performance, capacities, etc. So this is going to be our future work. ClassNet naturally supports the hierarchy architecture, but we need to do the following things. First, we need to report child cluster metadata to our parent cluster, so we can have a good overview from the top. Also, we need to enable cluster auto-discovery. When new clusters are joined, or old cluster get destroyed. Parent cluster can get the notifications. Multi-cluster topology introduces primary two classes of challenges. They require a form of synchronization between cluster control plans. This has already been solved in ClassNet. Second, they require a form of interconnections that make services accessible in different clusters. This is another challenge we need to handle in the future. If you want to know more about ClassNet, please visit our website ClassNet.io where you can find tutorials, documents, proposals out there. Also, you can check it out on GitHub. Thanks for coming. This is today's session. If you got any questions, feel free to open an issue on ClassNet GitHub repo, and feel free to ping me on Slack or send me emails. Thank you.